So, for a while now, Donald Trump has been questioning the mental acuity of his opponent, Joe Biden. He's called him sleepy, he's said he's forgetful, and he's said that he's not up for the job. The thing is that Biden is old, he's 77, which means that if he won, he'd be the oldest president ever to be inaugurated. The current oldest? Well, that's Trump. So if he wins in November, Trump will be the oldest person to ever win a presidential election. So we have two older gentlemen, and while we don't have many older viewers, I'm not looking to insult everyone over the age of 65, because we all know older people who are perfectly with it and more than capable of holding high office. The thing is that Trump's jumped on this argument hard and is really selling himself as the only person capable of actually doing the job. In an attempt to prove this, the president has recently taken to boasting about a test he took. A test which he says proves he's capable of running the country. And it was 30 or 35 questions. The first questions are very easy. The last questions are much more difficult. Uh, like a memory question, it's uh, like you'll go person, woman, man, camera, TV. So they say, could you repeat that? So I said, yeah. So it's person, woman, man, camera, TV. Okay, that's very good. If you get it in order, you get extra points. If you, okay, now he's asking you other questions, other questions, and then 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes later, they say, remember the first question? Not the first, but the 10th question? Give us that again. Can you do that again? And you go person, woman, man, camera, TV. If you get it in order, you get extra points. They said nobody gets it in order. It's actually not that easy, but for me it was easy. So we thought we'd put it to the test. How well can the TLDR team do at this test? So yesterday I put two of our employees to the test. If they pass, I'll give them a rather lovely t-shirt proclaiming their victory. If they don't, they're fired and we'll have to try and hire Trump instead. By the way, if you want to pick up one of these t-shirts, or any of our other designs, they're all linked in the store below. Before we get to the test itself, let's discuss the wider issue. Because while this might have all become a bit of a circus, it's a very real question. The president clearly holds vast amounts of power, not only diplomatically and militarily, but also as the leader of 328 million people. So while it might not feel very serious when two old guys argue about it on Fox News, this is a really important issue. We all need our leaders to be capable and competent. Were it true that Trump or Biden was lacking in mental faculties, it would genuinely be a problem. After all, the presidency is not an easy job. It's often described as the most stressful job in the world, and there's a reason for that. The president has to be able to make quick decisions on matters that could alter the lives of thousands if not millions of people. In a time of international crisis like we're living through right now, this is even more important. One wrong step could result in countless deaths. As such, Trump has made a central part of his campaign strategy attacking Biden's mental acuity and his ability to handle the duties of president. And to be fair, Biden does have a tendency of tripping over his words and go on rambling stories which don't exactly help his case. But of course, the presidency is about a lot more than just giving speeches, and Biden's eight years as vice president certainly gives some degree of credit to his sanity. But really, at this point, most speculation about each candidate's mental capacity is just that, speculation. And that's because there's no universally accepted method of determining a candidate's intellectual capacity. This, it seems, was a problem Trump seemed determined to remedy, which brings us back to the test itself. The test itself is the MOCA, or Montreal Cognitive Assessment. The purpose of the test is to screen for potential mental illnesses, usually brought on by old age. The website claims that the test is an effective tool for identifying diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ALS, and various other ailments which could result in cognitive decline. It measures things like language comprehension, spatial and temporal orientation, and of course, short-term memory. The final of those leading to the now famous, or arguably infamous, person-woman-camera-TV moment. And while the president may have somewhat overstated what an accomplishment passing the test is, he is fully correct in his assertion that passing the test is good. No matter your political orientation, I think we can all agree that the last thing 2020 needs is a president with early signs of dementia. 
So basically, the test is meant to screen for cognitive decline, not analyse the specific intellectual capacity of the person taking it. Still, it is good for a president to be able to pass it. So now we know what the test is and why it's important, we have three very serious caveats to make before proceeding. Firstly, the website and the test itself repeatedly state that the test is only meant to be conducted by medical professionals, which, spoiler alert, I'm not. Secondly, the test isn't really meant for people like Trump, Biden and that reporter, so it's certainly not intended for our staff who are in their early 20s. Thirdly, this test isn't a game, and failing it isn't like failing a quiz show. And like any other medical test or screening, it's designed to diagnose medical conditions, and not passing the test isn't funny or a failure in any way. Regardless, I thought it would be interesting to spring this test on them, see how they did, and if nothing else, it's a more interesting way of walking you through the format than just reading through it in a video. Oh, and the TLDI US team were just waking up when we recorded this, so I'm testing it with TLDI UK, and I've merged together the two tests into one. Just for anybody listening, I, I actually don't know what's happening right now. Like, I've been asked to record. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, as you probably guessed now, uh, I'm going to make you take the test. Oh, no. <laughs> Please draw a line going from a letter to a number in ascending order. Begin with one and then draw a line from one to A, then to two and so on, ending on E. So one to A. OK, boom. Sweet. Yeah, that's correct. So that is one point for you, Ben. OK, well cool. Oh, I think you've messed it up, mate. Have I? F***ing hell. Should have gone C to four rather than... C <laughs> oh, no, C to... <laughs> oh. Copy this drawing as accurately as you can. Okay. I, I, I don't have a ruler, so it's going to be... Yeah, I think that's a pass. The requirements are the drawing must be three-dimensional, all lines must be drawn, all lines must meet or with little space, no lines are added, lines are relatively parallel and their length are similar, and the chair's orientation in space must be preserved. Okay. I've done all of those. Now you've got a big hitter here, mate. This is for three points. Ooh. Oh, we're in sending in points. This is... Draw a clock, put in all the numbers, and set the time to ten past nine. I'm presuming you mean analogue. Yes. Good point, actually, though. Okay, so yeah, you score the points for the circle, you score the points for all the numbers being present, and you score the points for the hands being correct. So section two is the naming section. So okay. I'm going to send you three images, each is worth a point, and you have to name them. Tell me the name of this animal. So that's a snake. That is a snake. Uh, that's an elephant. It's an elephant. Ooh, do I have to get specific with this? Both of the answers you're thinking of are allowed. So... <laughs> Either a crocodile or an alligator. It's, I'm going to go with crocodile. All three points for you there. This is a memory test. I'm going to read you a list of words that you'll have to remember now and later on. Hand, nylon, park, carrot, yellow. Hand, Hand nylon, nylon, park, park carrot, carrot yellow. yellow. I will ask you to recall those words again at the end of the test. You scored no points for that, I'm afraid. That was just a warm-up. Oh, no. I'm going to say some numbers. Eight, one, five, two, four. Eight, one, five, two, four. Eight, one, five, two, four. I'm now going to say some more numbers. When I'm through, you must repeat them to me in the backward order. Two, four, seven. Seven, four, two. I'm going to read a sequence of letters. Every time I say the letter A, tap your hand once. If I say a different letter, do not tap your hand. F, B, A, C, M, N, A, A, J, K, L, B, A, F, A, K, D, E, A, 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 J, A, M, O, F, A, A, B. Correct. That is one point for you. No mistakes. Oh, come on. Good. It does seem like a test of Slack's audio quality as well. Now I'll ask you to count by subtracting 7 from 70 and then keep subtracting 7 from your answer until I tell you to stop. 70, 63... 56, 49, 42, 35, 28, Stop. 20. Stop, you're good, you're good. Can I just, I'd just like to caveat this with, I've done maths before, but I've always been terrible with mental arithmetic. So 70, 63, uh, uh, 56, 54, um, oh, I hate this, 47. Have I got wrong, gone wrong already? I feel like I have. You have, yeah. I have, okay. I'm going to read you out a sentence, repeat it after me exactly as I say it. The robber of the grey car was stopped by the police. The robber of the grey car was stopped by the police. The student went back to school without his books or pencils. The student went back to school without his books or pencils. 
Now I want you to tell me as many words as you can think of that begin with the letter S. I will tell you to stop after one minute. School. Sister. Strong. Spindly. That's your time. If you scored above 11, you got your point. So you got your point. Okay. I'll give you two words and I'd like you to tell me what category they belong to. Here's an example. Okay. An orange and a banana. That fruit. Fruit. Bed and table. Furniture. Furniture. Letter and telephone. Forms of communication. communication. Two points. I read you some words earlier, which I asked you to remember. Mm -hmm. Tell me as many of those words as you can remember. Hand, nylon, park, carrot, yellow. Hand, nylon, park, yellow, carrot. Five correct answers, all done without any cues. So that's the full 15 points, which means your total score is 29 out of 30. 28 out of 30. What was the passing mark? The test score of anything above 26 is considered normal. So congratulations, Ben, you are normal. So you've seen what the test is like and you've seen how our team did. It's worth emphasizing again that this test wasn't designed for them. And as the creator of the test commented, the test is supposed to be easy. If you'd like to take the test yourself, then you can find it online. However, as Mocha states on their website, we're explicitly asked not to share the link with you or publish the test itself. If you do take the test though and pass it, then feel free to show that off with a t-shirt from our merch store because we can't all get Fox News interviews to announce our test scores. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon if you want to find more videos like this one. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos just like this one, then be sure to back us on Patreon. It's linked down below.